I'd like to welcome everybody to the Southbridge Town Council meeting, Monday, June 3rd, 2024, 7 p.m., McKinney Council Chambers. Agenda item number one, pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item number two, roll call. Madam Secretary. Councillor Lazo. Present. Councillor Marchetti. Present. Councillor Adams. Present. Councillor Chenier. Present. Councillor Daniel. Present. Councillor Dow. Present. Councillor Montigny. Present. Councillor Ortiz. Present. Councillor Rivas. Present. We have a quorum. Moving on to subcommittees, number three. Subcommittee reports, Department of Public Works. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, we had the Subcommittee meeting on May 24th. Agenda items number 8 through 14 on tonight's schedule. There's no DPW scheduled in the near future. Thank you. Moving on to B, Education Human Services. Through you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have a meeting scheduled for Wednesday, June 5th at 6.30 p.m. Moving on to General Government, Council of Montecting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we thought we were going to have a meeting before the, the session, uh, but it looks like we're tentatively planning one for Wednesday, June 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to planning and development, Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, we have uh, no recent meetings. There is one tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, June 12th. Moving on to E, protections of persons and property. No meeting, no meeting scheduled, but there is an agenda item tonight that was I was contacted and I asked the manager to put it on for tonight. Thank you. Moving on to Chairman's announcements. I have no announcements at this time. Moving on to Town Manager's announcements. Mr. Town Manager. Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, first off, we did receive the petition for the Moore Street Maria Ave uh, residence um, relative to its protection of wildlife and noise. Uh, it will state that the police department did have active patrols over the last two weekends. We did get feedback from the neighbors saying that it was uh, the quietest it has been in a long time. However, now we are receiving some complaints that they have moved over to the North Woodstock side of the uh, trails. So the police department has been actively involved trying to curb that um, information. In regards to the curbside DPW uh, lot, um, the first quarter, FY25 opt-out has been closed as of May 30th, 24. And just for everybody out there, lawn and leaf waste disposal is Monday through Friday from approximately 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 to 4. There will be no illegal dumping in front of the gates. We, will, uh, we have cameras installed there that take very good pictures of license plates. Um, we have turned information over to the police department relative to the people that are illegally dumping in that area. We will be working to put additional signage up, but uh, that program is ongoing. Um, I know it's a change for the residents because they're used to going at any time. However, this is a whole change in scope of how we do our curbside leaf uh, drop-off waste. Um, we're fortunate that we did work that into the program for residents that uh, participate in the program. And I do know that the monitors are actively um, taking down licenses uh, at this site. Um, so mm -hmm. just bear with us as that changes. Uh, that from before it was a pretty much a free for all. Anybody from any time, one of the cameras did um, take uh, a Connecticut license plate that was dropping leaves off at that uh, facility. So our belief that people from out of town were using that open area to dispose of um, is coming true. And finally, um, we have, and I think everybody has received notice that Food Share has been asked to leave the Catholic Charities um, building here in Southbridge um, after decades in that facility. Uh, I know there are a lot of entities and individuals out there looking for space. I've had calls into the office here and a lot of outreach in the community. So hopefully we can work together to make sure that that important program for food share that has been a staple in the area can uh, go on. And that's all I have for this evening. Moving on to Citizens Forum. Are there any citizens that would like to address the council on any issues that are not on the agenda? 
There are no citizens at this time. Moving on to presentations. We have no presentations at this time. Moving on to agenda item number eight, vote to confirm the town manager's appointment of Tyler Gregoire as maintenance man slash equipment operator as recommended by the DPW director pending successful onboarding and state ethics. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Shania, seconded by Ortiz. Council Adams. I believe chair is in favor of, please, sir. Subcommittee was favorable. Any discussion? Mr. Thank Marchetti. you, Mr. Chairman. I just have one question. Is this a replacement or is this a new hire? That's my only question. Thank you. Um, this is not a replacement. This is a new hire for vacant positions that have been open for a number of time, period of time. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. Moving on to nine. Vote. A DPW transfer for eleven thousand dollars from account zero zero one four nine five five two nine zero 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 Stone Ice Spec Service to account zero zero one four nine nine five two four three zero 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 four nine nine repair and maintenance of building and grounds of DPW to pay for the repainting of the salt shed and authorize the town manager to sign all relative paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion by Shania, seconded by Ortiz. Councilor Adams. Favorable again, Mr. Chair. Three zero. Favorable by DPW subcommittee. Any further discussion? Thank Council you, Mr. Mark Chairman, Kelly. through you. So at the meeting, I did discuss these next three items, which I feel that are, these are capital items. <coughs> and should go through the capital planning process. Now, when I sat, when I chaired the first capital planning committee with Councilor uh, Dow and Councilor Lazo, we did look at the uh, whole capital planning process. What are the benefits of having a capital planning planning program? Well, the benefits are is that you are doing planning for the future. That's why it's a planning um, program. Um, one of the benefits of having a capital planning is that you're not just shooting from the hip. Oh, we have some free money, let's spend it on something. And what it does is that it ensures that the most important projects get funded. And I know the town manager has been saying that the most important project for him this year is the fire station. So if you want the fire station funded, then it's, it's a better plan to make sure that all the available funds that are not being used don't, don't just get transferred to something whenever somebody wants something, but that it goes back into free cash so that you have the funds for this, um, for the material that, the, that you want or for the items that you want. The salt shed, I will agree, I did see the salt shed on the capital budget, the five-year capital budget plan. It was for $50,000, so is, my question to the town manager is the $11,000, is that going to cover the painting of the salt sheds? Mr. Town Manager. Through you, uh, the DPW director did go out and request quotes. This is a state bid contract, and he has assured us that is the cost that was quoted to do the job correctly. So the $50,000 that's in the five, six year, five year plan uh, was just a overestimate of how much it was gonna cost. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I think I explained into the um, when I did my presentation at the budget hearing that some of those uh, estimates did not have a lot of backup material to it, and that's why we were looking to revamp the whole capital planning process. These three items, while I understand your position, um, there are specific reasons why we're prioritizing on them this year within. Uh, budget money that we already have in the budget. We we're fortunate not to have a snow and ice as extreme as, as normal. Yes, could it close out to free cash, but these are strategic one-time costs to make sure that we can adequately um, serve the citizens and protect buildings and grounds. I'd just like to add a little bit to the, the number. This is a new DPW director, and I think every time he does something, he does it to a T. It's eleven thousand dollars. Where, in past years, people were shooting numbers out fifty thousand. That'll cover it um, without any data backing it up. So I think moving forward, the new DPW director is more detailed than 
the previous. So I think it's all good, and moving forward, I mean, the salt line does need to work. Councilor Marchetti, you're complete? So, and I agree that if it needs it, then I would agree that we need to spend some money on it. To me, a salt shed is something that should be done probably every single year. But what, but what I'm trying to get at here is that $11,000, according to our policy, is a capital item. And we need to plan for these capital items and not just shoot from the hit, let's do it, we got some money, let's spend it on something. If that's the way we're going to do it, then there's really, you might as well just do away with capital planning. Uh, it's not very good planning, in my opinion. Thank you. Any other discussion, Councilor Shania? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I think, I think time will tell you and show you that sometimes these projects that are in the capital planning aspect of our budget uh, tends never to get done. And we end up with a situation of uh, this repair that's beyond the, in this case, $11,000. As was explained the other night, uh, it hasn't been done in a while, and that the $11,000, <clears> through the good effort of the uh, DPW director, was able to get a, a, a price that is much cheaper than the $50,000 that was first proposed. And in the meantime, he's also going to do repairs to the salt shed. So the longer we wait, the longer things go down, and we'll end up in a situation like we do with all our buildings, falling apart. So I, I, I support this wholeheartedly tonight. Any other councilors like to speak at this time? Council Dan. Thank you, Chair to you. Next time you have extra money, fix that roof, please. Leaking water. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other further discussion on the agenda item? If not, all in favor? Opposed? One opposed. Moving on to 10, vote the ADPW transfer for $14,000 from 001495-529000 Snow and Ice Spec Service to 001499583000 small capital to cover the purchase of a vehicle code scanner and related software and authorize the town manager to sign all related paperwork. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Dow, seconded by Ari. Moving on. <laughs> Excuse me, Council Ortiz. Uh, Council Adams. DPW subcommittee, favor of. Favorable by DPW subcommittee. Any further discussion, Mr. Town Manager? Yeah, just through you, um, I know this was mentioned about why it wasn't on the capital plan. This was one of those items that, in, during the conversation that we had on, during our budget, we do have capable service stations that we do send our equipment to. However, we have two mechanics in our DPW and an assistant mechanic. Um, they need the tools to make sure that they can troubleshoot our vehicles and repair them in-house. Um, essentially, hopefully, save money down the road. We have a fleet of smaller vehicles, and we don't have a scanner to uh, troubleshoot those uh, things. So it, we look at this as an investment in saving money down the road as to the number of uh, items that we have to go out to actually have them scanned. Uh, to find out that it might be a sensor that we could fix in-house. So that's the reason for this. Any discussion by council? Go Thank you, Chair you. When you say small vehicle, so that not included the big trucks? Because $14,000 for a scanner should be do all the vehicle. If you have a train, too, it should do it, too. I, I'll defer to the DPW director, but I think it was for all the vehicles. I, it could be for the large vehicles as well, but they did not have a scanner. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. No, 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 uh, to this? no, no brainer, but they should scan a truck too. Especially all those new ones have OBD to scan. It's easy. Just this Please explain what the question is. Does this cover all the big trucks or just small trucks? No, company? this is just for, uh, so the code scanner that we did purchase for the larger equipment only handles one ton pickups and larger. It's, it's, this, it's a similar scanner, but the, the, the company that we purchased it through does not have the proprietary um, programming for the smaller vehicles. Their space, it does everything from a, a one-ton dump truck up to like a tri-axle, and then also like our sweepers, our backhoes, stuff like that. They can do, uh, retrieve the codes and, and do certain uh, parameter stuff in, in the <coughs> systems, but it, it doesn't work on like the, all of the towns uh, so smaller. That, that one here, you mean? Or no, that the one that we already have will do all the one-ton trucks and larger. Okay. So what we're asking for is a uh, an automotive scanner. So it'll it'll do 
whatever we have here in the fleet for small pickup trucks, F-150s, Ford Rangers, the Escape, I think there's like three or four you, other vehicles. You, you mind if I ask you what brand you're buying? Snap like Snap-on, Medco? Snap-on. Huh? Snap-on. At 14,000? It's, uh, I think it was just under $9,000 for the unit and then a three-year three service contract for the, um, uh, the data and the updates. Okay. So they have the update for three years, not only yes. the scanner, that's, that's the main, okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Makes sense, man. Any further discussion? <laughs> not all in favor? Opposed? One opposed. Moving on to 11, voting DPW transfer of 22,000 from account 001495529000, snow and ice spec service to account 001 499-858-3000, small capital to cover the purchase of a utility vehicle for the use at the Oak Ridge Cemetery and authorize the town manager to sign all related paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion by Shania, seconded by Dow. Favorable. Favorable at subcommittee from Council Adams. Discussion? No discussion, all those in favor? Opposed? One opposed. Moving on to 12. <clears throat> Vote the contract with tie and bond for $95,000 for the reservoir number three dredge feasibility study funded from the joint account, project account, 420000-53000-64485 raw water improvements and to authorize the town manager to sign all related paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion to second? Favorable from the subcommittee. Councilor Adams, favorable from DPW subcommittee. Discussion? There's no discussion, all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. No, that Excuse me, one opposed, sorry. Moving on to 13, vote. The water department grant opportunity from the EPA slash DEP Sire security grant for a up to $50,000, no town match required to, <clears throat> to be used to upgrade radio communication from the SCADA system to provide, and to, oh, I, I got an ink, uh, ink out here. Encryption. Encryption and enhanced programming authorize the town manager to sign all related paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion by Shinya, seconded by Dow. Favorable from the Favorable from DPW subcommittee. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. <clears throat> Vote to adopt the town engineer's job description. So moved. Second. Motion by Senior, seconded by Dow. Unanimous at the Infinity Unanimous at DBW subcommittee. Discussion by council. No discussion, all those in favor? Opposed, unanimous of all present. <clears throat> Vote to accept the United Way after school and out of school program grant for the summer programming activities through the Recreation Department in the amount of $8,440 and allow the town manager to sign all <clears throat> to sign the memorandum of understanding and any other related paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion by Shania, seconded by Dow. Discussion. No further discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. Moving on to 16. Voting fire department transfer of twelve thousand dollars from the account zero zero one two two zero five one one. Zero, zero, 000 salary and wages to account 1001-220-513000 overtime to cover overtime costs for the remainder of the fiscal year. So moved. Moved by Shinya, seconded by Dow. Discussion. Councilor Shinya, is this the one that we pushed up from? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mark Chairman. Through you. Uh, why is this needed? I mean, we're almost at the end of the fiscal year. Let's see. Manager? 
I'll, I'll defer to the chief, but I do know that they've had an extraordinary amount of calls and callbacks, multiple um, calls that they have to send uh, individuals to the city, um, simultaneous calls. So this would just uh, give them enough to make sure they reach to the end of the fiscal year. I'll let chief, chief elaborate anything. More. So good, good evening, everybody. Exactly what the town manager says, as you very well know, when we build the fire department's budget, we estimate on histor historical factors throughout the year. Right now, I have about $7,000 left in my overtime account. That's uh, to cover uh, 2.3 uh, payrolls coming up. Um, I know that we're one first alarm, a, two, a second alarm fire, or a multiple, multiple recall situation uh, that we will not have enough money, money to cover those costs. So is this due to ambulance calls? To the chair, this is for everything, everything we do. Fire calls, ambulance calls, everything. But I mean, why do you need the overtime? You don't have enough, you, we've hired a lot of firefighters. You should be able to man the, the fire station. So why would we need overtime? They're already there, right? You are correct that we do have a seven-member uh, seven manned uh, station at all times, 24 hours a, a day. But in you see, understanding that there is multiple calls that happen that we do have to call back for recall, people to come in. Sometimes we're at four at the station, depending on uh, vacation and sick time and personal <clears throat> time. So at times, we're not there at seven all the time. Uh, what happens is if there's two ambulance calls and you're at four people, two people per ambulance, if you have a third ambulance call, it's automatic overtime if we can fill it. So that happens on a regular basis. Does so that explain that? All, the, all the ambulance calls that we get, it doesn't seem to me that it's really making money for the town is, is what I'm always told is that the ambulance service makes money for the town, but if we have to keep covering them with overtime, I don't see how it's saving the town a lot of money. Don't we have a call firefighter department as well? That is correct. We do have a call department. And w wouldn't they be utilized? They, they are called out. They have the same opportunities as the full-time staff that come in on recall. Um, they just they work jobs during the day, and busy. And it's got, the busy times do happen pretty much during the daytime hours, and they're always not available. Okay. Thank you. Any further? If this would help it, Mr. Chair, is the fact that just take the, the, the an incident that happened this two weekends ago. They had four ambulance calls, three, uh, four ambulance calls came in, two of the ambulances ended up going to Worcester. We had to call mutual aid. It was a situation where the, the apartment was left unattended and they had to call people in to cover the shift. And, and that's a common event that happens. And this particular was, in these particular things, it was all true emergencies besides. We had multiple stabbings, beatings, and uh, life-threatening uh, situations that ended up going to the city. So when you go to the city with two ambulances, you've got four guys that are gone right off the bat. They had another ambulance call come in for that situation, that the duty shift that was recalled took it in, and then Charlton came in to help to assist, and then Sturbridge was able to turn around, if I understood it correctly. So it's calls like this that are common theme of late. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Council Dow. Thank you, Chief. Chief, how many call men we have on a call? We have currently right now seven call members. I'm evaluating two, uh, two applications currently as we speak. For so we have more, more people moving forward to, to be volunteered as well, call men to the town service? Are you going to take them in? you planning to take them in? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Council Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the Chief. Contractually, is there a minimum <clears throat> amount that has to be paid on overtime? Is there like a three hour minimum or something like that? So when a recall does take place, the overtime, uh, the contractual rate uh, is three hours automatic. So it's about, if you use some rough figures that each member will get about $150 on that recall. So generally we need to have two or three or four people on a recall depending on what staff goes out of, out of, out of town. Like George was explaining, excuse me, Councilor Shenya as it was explaining. When that situation happened the, uh, the other night, both of the ambulances went out of town. We did a recall. We did get four people to come back to cover the station, but as soon as the, the couple of guys that live closest to the fire station, they actually grabbed the third ambulance and went to the call. Um, so it's, it's fluent all the time. There's always going to be overtime within the fire department. Uh, we will never have enough staff here. To, to, we, we should be at like 10 or 12 people, c considering throughout the rest of the state, if you look at the uh, ratios that each other town and city has at our size, our demographics, 
in the call volume that we're experiencing. Is it true that uh, there was a day recently that you had 21 calls? Uh, I believe last Friday, I think they did 21 or 22 calls. That's, that's pretty much the norm as we keep moving forward. In a 24-hour period? 24-hour period. Okay. Yeah, you're busy. Yep. Town manager? Yes, yeah, just through you. Um, if you listen to the, to the radio of all the neighboring towns, every town is having the same issues with the ambulance calls. And I'm not sure if it's just a sign of the times with our medical um, environment, but it just seems like a lot more people are going to the hospital as opposed to just seeking out urgent care for some of the, and it t ties up the ambulance. And I'm just saying that as an aside. So we're not the only town that's experienced multiple calls at the same time. It's happening everywhere, which does drain our mutual aid ability for other towns to come in because they're going out on two calls as well. So it's a, it's an ongoing issue. Any Thank further you. discussion by council? Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous of all present. Moving on to 17. Approve applying for the Massachusetts Downtown Initiative, FY 2025 Technical Assistance Program to fund 100% of the remaining design for the Downtown Historic Walk Tour for up to $25,000 and allow the town manager to sign all related paperwork. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilor Shinya, seconded by Councilor Dow. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Well, I, I had a question. Oh, raise your hand. Yeah, well, I did. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, my blind side. So this is a new agenda item that did not go to any subcommittee. So I talked to Councilor Daniels in a scheduling with, Councilor, with myself, and he had no problem pushing it up to Council, and Peg Dean uh, was in favor, and so we moved it right up to Council. Right. So, so the, the grant, what I'm reading here is just a little confusing. We're getting a 50%, a $50,000 grant, but we have to match it one-to-one, -one, so we have to come up with $50,000 of additional monies for this grant. Am I, am I reading that right? Um, no. I'm not reading it right? Okay. Okay. If, if I may, through you, Chair, thank you for bringing this agenda item forward. When I was working on the One Stop for Growth, which has the 12 different applications you can apply for only at one time during the year, uh, we're doing so right now for two grants, the Brownfields and the MassWorks, I stumbled across the Massachusetts Downtown Initiative. Um, at first blush, I did not think this was an appropriate grant for the town, but reading closer, I think that we should apply, and we should apply for the design of the historic walking tour. We simultaneously also applied for the MOT grant, the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism grant, for up to $50,000 with the one-to-one -one match. And so that was for design and construction. So my goal is to see the town get awarded the MDI grant for the design. There's no match. We've got the 25,000 out of the way, then potentially have 25,000 left for the construction only. And then that would be the one-to-one -one match. It's hard to imagine fundraising is going to be easy, so anything we can do to try to reduce the amount of fundraising that needs to be done towards that project, the better. All right. Thank you. And it's due on Wednesday. Do the councilors right. have any other discussion? Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to say that <coughs> this is this historical walk, the tour of the downtown, is one of those um, items that come in front of the council that add to the color and to the nuance of the town. Um, you know, roads are great but there's more to the town than, than what we've been doing tonight in terms of the grants and the transfers. Um, this is what makes a good town a great town, and I'm very pleased to be supporting this item. Any further discussion by council? Not all those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous for all present. Moving on to agenda item number 18, review and amend to the South, town of South, Massachusetts Code of Bylaws, Chapter 11, Departmental Revolving Funds, Section 11, 500 Authorized Revolving Funds by adding the following. Council Montague. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 11-500.8, uh, Senior Center Revolving Fund. 11-500.8.1, Fund Name. There shall be a separate fund called the Senior Center Revolving Fund authorized for use by the Senior Center. 
11-500.8.2 Revenues. The town accountant shall establish the Senior Center Revolving Fund as a separate account and credit to the fund all of the program fees, private sponsorship, donations, and participation fees charged and received by the Senior Center Department in connection with the operation of the Senior Center. 11-500.8.3 Purposes and Expenditures. During each fiscal year, the Community Center Community slash Senior Center Director may incur liabilities against and spend monies from the Senior Center Revolving Fund for payment to instructors, presenters, service providers, supplies for special programs, and repairs in connection with the operation of the Senior Center. 11-500.8.4, other requirements slash reports, none. 11-500.8.5, fiscal years. The Senior Center Revolving Fund shall operate for fiscal years that begin on or after July 1st, 2024, and this is the second reading. Second reading has been completed. At the next meeting, we'll have third reading and the vote on the bylaw. If anybody would like to amend it at that time, feel free. Moving on to Council's Forum, Agenda Number 19. Council Rivas. Thank you, through you. Um, I wanted to just kind of review, um, there was a resident who had requested information and suggested that the town council consider building a database um, around police misconduct settlements. Uh, this resident had wanted, wants to make sure that our government um, is more transparent. Um, I sent out the information to Chief Woodson, just kind of getting some information on what is already out there before we entertain any type of um, suggestion. So he sent back to me under chapter 253 of the Acts of 2020, an act relative to justice, equity, and accountability in law enforcement in the Commonwealth, which is also known as the Police Reform Bill, um, that any and all tracking is now done by the Independent Police Officer Standards and Training Commission at the state level. Um, everything is considered public record which is great, which is should be, and easily accessible to anyone who wants to Google search, um, which I actually did Google search the post on the mass.gov site, um, and it lists every community in our Commonwealth um, with all of the information on any um, misconduct complaints and the outcome, whether it was sustained, what, you know, whether there was a written reprimand, um, or suspension or anything like that. Um, it does include the name of the officer um, and any information that the public is looking for. So I wanted to share that, um, uh, you know, since this uh, resident had requested uh, for us to discuss that um, at this time. I'm, you know, I think that that is a great resource for our residents to be able to get this information. Um, and it definitely negates us having to create a database locally since this is uh, available um, statewide through mass.gov. So I wanted to share that. I also wanted to share that um, this Saturday, June 8th, the Bridge Fridge um, has their Serenity Board Games event on the Town Common from 1 to 4 p.m. Uh, there will be a lot of different games for families and for students. This is their second event um, they started last year, and I will also be doing community yoga um, during this event. Um, so come on out on Saturday to uh, the Common. I also wanted to just quickly mention Cops and Kids and community leaders had their first um, youth basketball clinic um, this, this evening right before uh, we had our meetings, and I stopped in to just you know, gauge the interest. There was a huge crowd of parents and students. It was great to see the turnout. Um, that clinic will run um, all every Monday in June from five to eight. Um, and students can drop in with their parents to register. Um, we will be providing snacks. The community is, um, you know, has volunteers working on this program. And uh, it's a great program, kind of a collaboration between Cops and Kids, um, the Bridge Fridge, 508 Forever, um, 
and many other volunteers that I'll, I'll forget to mention someone if I try to name everyone. But I just wanted to share that. That was a great turnout today, and we hope that you know um, families send their students. Um, it's for grades one through 12. Um, and they, they'll have like sort of different divisions. And as we kind of develop this program, um, it'll probably be in different locations, so stay tuned. But I just wanted to mention that was a great um, first day today. And finally, on Sunday, June 9th, the Ruth Wells Art Center will have an opening reception for my solo exhibit at the Ruth Wells Center for the Arts from 1 to 4 p.m. And I'd be remiss to mention June 11th is the town elections. Uh, please come out 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Is that our usual? Um, I watched our candidates forum, uh, you know, this a couple weeks ago, and you know there are a lot of candidates competing for town council and school committee. Um, you know, do your due diligence as a voter and watch that forum and get some information. Talk to the candidates, reach out to them, and yeah, if, you ha if you're not voting by mail, uh, see you at the polls. Council Dow. Thank you, Chair, at this time. Council Junior. Nothing tonight, Mr. Chair. Council Montigny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to make mention a very big thank you to Esteban Carrasco and uh, a lot of other people that were involved with uh, the cheerleader parade this weekend. Um, it, was, it was a great, we could do so, so much for them, and you know, they went down there and they won the grand championship and everything, so thank you to everybody that was involved with that. They were very happy, and I think it's a good thing for Southbridge. It's a unanimous from all departments. Everybody's happy. Go Pioneers. Thank you. Council Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to thank the uh, counselors, the town manager, for attending the Memorial Day parade. It was a great parade. Uh, it keeps getting bigger every single year, so we expect a lot more next year. Thank you. Council Ortiz. Nothing tonight, thank you. Are you sure? I'm part of <laughs> Council Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, I was down at the Common on Saturday, uh, on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. Uh, the weather was great, and uh, it was super to see the cheerleaders getting their uh, recognition and seeing various uh, dignitaries uh, giving them certificates and proclamations, and uh, it was just a great time. Uh, my wife and I enjoyed being there, and uh, we wish them good luck for next year, too. Let's keep it going. Um, in doing some research for a constituent, I found out that there are many services available in town covering a wide variety of issues. I want first to thank Councillor Revis for pointing me in the right direction, direction to begin with, um, because I was kind of at a loss in terms of where to begin exactly. And uh, we had a conversation, and uh, she was very good about where to start and where to get things going. Um, I want to give a large thank you as well to Margaret Morrissey, who is the director of the library. She, along with her staff, have access to what amounts to a large database of links and information on a wide variety of issues that our citizens may be confronting. Our library is an excellent place to begin a search for information. In short, <coughs> While our library has a treasure trove of literature for our reading pleasure, it is also a valuable community resource, one that should not be discounted, but rather embraced for the resource that it is. So thank you, Margaret and staff, for maintaining such a fine institution. Uh, regarding tonight's meeting, I want to thank Rich Benoit and Steve Gregoire for staying ahead of the game regarding our fresh water supply. Um, this is the time of year when people begin to check their water quality and they complain about the color of the water or the odor of the water and that sort of thing. And tonight's agenda item regarding um, the, uh, the reservoir work is a big step in terms of helping to take care of that problem. And it's nice to see people thinking ahead and keeping us ahead of the game. So thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that very much. Um, the Southbridge Women's Club, an organization in existence for almost a century, uh, recently disbanded. And as a result, the ladies of the club decided to redistribute uh, their remaining funds. They made a number of extraordinarily generous contributions to various civic organizations in town. Um, I understand that uh, one person was particularly uh, flabbergasted at the generosity of the donation um, and just was rendered speechless uh, by, by the, the uh, donation. Um, they were also funding two scholarships this year for deserving students in town. And um, it's just 
a, a remarkable way, I think, to uh, make a lasting impact um, and um, not letting us forget for a long time uh, the work that they did over the course of probably a century. Um, up to the very last, this club showed shine, kindness and compassion for fellow Southridge citizens. We're a wonderful town, and we have people who, great people who live here and care for each other very much. So ladies, thank you very much. Uh, lastly, I want to echo Jasmine, Councilor Rivas. Uh, Tuesday, Jan June 11th is town election day. Whoever you want to vote for, you must show up to make it count. Complaining is one thing, but performing your civic duty is quite another. If you haven't already voted by mail, please make time during that day, June 11th, to go to the Senior Center at the end of Chestnut Street and make your voice heard. And while you're there, take a moment to speak with and thank Town Clerk Maddie Bonadies and the election workers. It's a very long day for them, and the service they provide is what makes our great democracy work. Without them, it's anarchy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's all I have. Council Marchetti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I was hoping to see the five-year capital or the capital improvement program for FY25 tonight. Um, if it's going to be on the next town council meeting, I will not be able to meet that, make that meeting, so I'll be the last to be excused. So I would just like to speak a little bit to it tonight. Just going over your, the town manager's five-year plan, I see that a lot of, several items have been Source, the source of uh, funding is from capital stabilization. Uh, patrol vehicles, epoxy floors, portable radios, air packs, and about $500,000 in equipment for the DPW department. And looking, adding that all up, it's about $750,000 of capital stabilization money. But I know at the last meeting you only said, you said we only had 551,000. So it'll be interesting to see how exactly you're, what you're going to do to make up the short in that fund. Uh, maybe you're going to transfer some free cash. I really don't know at this time. I will say this though, the epoxy floors for the police we did fund last year, unless this is a different part of the building. The portable radios and the air packs, the air packs we funded $100,000 of capital last year and $100,000 of ARPA, so that's $200,000 that, um, that we funded last year. So I, I, I'm going to presume you're going to fund another $100,000 for the air packs. I did look at some of the, the voting that took place last year. I won't go through all of that, except for the animal shelter, we voted last year to put an additional $250,000 in the animal shelter budget, but on your five-year plan here, you show that there's only $260,000 balance in the animal shelter, so I, would, I think that someone has forgot to put the 250 in there, so because I think the, the 260 was from was already there, we voted to put an additional 250,000 from free cash for the animal shelter. I'd also like to point out, just going over what you listed at the last meeting, three million, you have three million in free cash, about 551,000 in capital stabilization, another 5.1 million in stabilization, water retained 1.7, sewer retained 2.6. Karen Har Harnois had sent me a list that also included a line item called water stabilization in FY23, which was 270,000 at that time. It wasn't on your list at the last meeting, so I don't know what happened to that. Maybe it's considered part of the retained earnings. Uh, the landfill royalty funds from 23 was 4 million. Chapter 90, if I recall a couple, maybe a month or so ago, I thought that the DPW director said that we had some that the Chapter 90 money had been built up, and I, I want to say four million, but I might be, it's, it might be one million, but I know that he said it had been built up over a, a certain period of time that it still could be used. When I add up all the funds that we have here, available funding, it's about $22 million, so that would go a long ways towards funding the fire station, help funding the fire station, if that is what your plan is going forward. 
Um, I'd also like to, to just mention that at the last DPW meeting, I think the DPW director said that, it, that there were not going to be a lot of roads done this year. Maybe one, but he didn't sound like he, to me it didn't sound like he was positive. He might do Denison, but that's about the only road. Besides all the other roads that are going to be done, um, the only one that is in our road improvement plan is the one road, and that's just a possible, not definite. That's the way I, I heard it. Um, for curbside, there's been a lot of people talking about curbside, a lot of people complaining about the abatements. I have talked to some officials from other communities, and what they're telling me is that that is something that the town council has to take up as far as abatements and uh, vacant properties go. I don't know if, if that's something that the Board of Health can do or if the town council has to take up, but that's what I've been told. I'd also like to make sure that at some point we bring back the transfer station. It's something that Councillor Adams and I talked about, and I know it was talked about at the Board of Health meeting. I don't want it to be forgotten. I want the transfer station to stay on your radar because it's something that I really think we need in this town, and we also, we also know that it can be partly funded by CDBG money. And uh, finally, I hope everybody can get out and vote next week, uh, June 11th. Um, I'd like to see a good turnout. We seem to have not had a really great turnout the last few years, and hopefully we can end that trend, and, and going forward we get more people out to vote. So that's all I have. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number 20, discussion next meeting day. Mr. Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next meeting is Monday, June 17th, 7 p.m. in the council chambers. Turn that number 21, adjournment. So moved. Aye. Motion by Schindler, seconded by Dow. All those in favor? Opposed? The enemies of all present. Meeting is adjourned.